are doing a bigger project on the new house right now and that is upgrading the electrical service from 100 to 200 amps. The main reason I'm doing that is because I'm installing a heat pump. This house had a uh, oil heater in it and then no AC so they just used window units and then it has an oil furnace in the basement and it has some propane heaters on the wall. Well I'm putting a heat pump in this uh, that's going to cost between $3,000 and $3,500 to install the heat pump and then I'm doing an electrical service upgrade. I'm doing that work myself. The box was $110. Um, I think so far I've spent around $200 for the components. Um, some of that will be returned. I bought more breakers than I needed. Sorry, right. walked right past what I want to talk about. Um, hopefully that's not too loud. Let me go back over here. What I am doing is I had the electric disconnected, the poles right behind the camera, and I forgot to look inside the breaker box before I did so. The repercussions of doing that is I discovered that the box was not labeled, so the wires coming into the box aren't labeled, and the inside of the door they didn't write down which wire does, which breaker does what. So I don't have current coming to the house, so I am with my generator back feeding electric into the house. So I made up this cord, I think they're referred to as suicide cords. It looks like this on both ends. So that runs into an extension cord and then basically the current's flowing backwards through that cord into an outlet. This is just a 120 outlet. So what that means is that is only connected to one bar inside of the breaker box. So this is the new breaker box. So this is sort of a diagram of what the inside looks like. In order to have power to the whole house, you have to feed into a 240, which puts um, puts power to both sides. So what you can you can do is jump power from one breaker to the other, or you can just kind of figure it out one at a time. I plugged into one outlet on the carport, and that was on this side, and so I figured out all the breakers on one side, and then I um, one of the outlets on the over the kitchen counters are on the other side. So that's sort of a simplified version, but if you ever back feed into a 120 outlet, you're gonna, some of your stuff's gonna work, some of it's not gonna work. It's just because you have to get power to both sides. So with that said, I'm back fed into here. I've got all the breakers turned off, main breakers off, the power line's disconnected on the pole anyway. So with that disconnected, I can then go into the basement. I'm just giving you a demonstration, I've already, done this and of course it's dark in the house right now pretty much so you're gonna have to work with me and sorry about any dizziness so the box is right here let me turn a light on for you um, how do you like that box let me go ahead and pop you on the tripod here see if I can do this a little more stably and I'll pull it off the tripod and show you some stuff there we go. Um, so, from here, I'm gonna pretend I don't know which one it is. All these wires are coming down through the floor. Some are running through the floor joists throughout the basement. So I can just take this. This tool is a, a, I call it a sniffer. It just is, what does it say? Voltage detector. Go to each wire. Oh, must be that one. Sometimes what I'll do though is I'll check the wires beside it because sometimes you'll have two wires right beside each other and you'll touch one wire and, uh, and just because it's close, you'll set that one off. But it's this, that wire had a number on it, 3R, meaning that it goes to the way they did it. It's the, they just 3R, which means it's the third breaker down on the right. So what I did is I came in here and I just numbered all the breakers the same as the wires. But, um, you can't always trust that, you need to check it. So then I'll come down to the third breaker and check that one. So the third breaker is now supplying uh, with it on. If it's off, it's just gonna be to that, to, just to that wire alone. So when I'm first checking, um, when I first plug it in, I have all the other ones turned off and I can go around and check those outlets real quick and whichever outlets or lights turn on signifies what's just on that wire. So that's turned on. 3R, and then the way this type of a box, this is a QO box, it is putting power to every other breaker, um, and then the breaker directly to the left or the right of it. So I can turn on this one, for example, the three that's on the left, 
and that is now putting power to that one. And that particular one is an outlet that is in the bathroom. And again, I said it's every other breaker. So what we are going to do is we're gonna skip a breaker, we're gonna come up, and that is one on the right. We're gonna check it. So we got power coming to it. Then we are going to, oh God, what does that one go to? I'm not gonna do that one right now. I'm gonna do the one on the left. So I'll check that. We've got power going to 1L. I can follow it up. And I see that it runs through the floor. So that's gonna give me an idea of where it's going. It's going upstairs. It's not one running to some outlets in the basement or the lights in the basement. So now, okay, that's the only one turned on. I'm gonna pop you off the tripod and bring you along for the ride. Let me turn my flashlight off real quick. We won't need that. So we are gonna go upstairs and with this sniffer, we're gonna find this. I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I was thinking that might be the case. So that is the kitchen fan. Come over here. So we don't have power to that one. It's probably just supplying power to this. Okay, so we're getting power to the carport light. We're getting power to the dining room, but we're not getting power to the kitchen light. So apparently they have two uh, lines running into that, and lines meaning you know one to ru running directly. It's the one that's bringing the power into the box. We will come over here because this is when it was acting funny earlier. wasn't turning on. I'm thinking that one's disconnected in the wall. So we have carport light, kitchen, okay, not the hall light. We've got power here, and we'll check. We've got power here. What do we got? Still don't have power to that one. We've got power here. Bathroom, might be all the bedrooms, no. Nope. Okay, so our power goes to the bathroom, front bedroom, living room, dining room. This will probably be on a separate one, yep. So now what I do, I run back into the basement. I'm also gonna check that. Nope, no power out there. I hope this is fun. This is how you figure things out. A lot of times videos just skip all this and just show you, you know, show you just the good stuff. Um, let me think real quick. Let me take, bring you over to some light. Do I have any identifying information on here? No. Um, let me turn this. Okay. So. I've got the whole house mapped out. And then what I'm doing is showing, wait, is that focused? Give me a second. There we go. So I've got the whole house mapped out. So the number of that breaker was one on the left. So I will probably write, let's see, what was that? Uh, sorry, orientation. This is the dining room. So the light here, one L, I'm gonna write fan, light. One L, I'll just put fan, I know what that means. One L, light. So that is now labeled what that one breaker goes to. And uh, the best thing you want to do though is if anything, it doesn't always make sense. There could be some random outlet that someone tied into this. So unless I have 
already identified an outlet that goes to another breaker, I will check um, other outlets. For example, this one here in the kitchen above the counter, that one does, for whatever reason, all these outlets that go around the um, kitchen, that one didn't go off. My guess is there's a problem with the outlet. That wire's probably come loose inside the box. So I'm gonna open that up and check it. But if you have some random outlets here and there or uh, lights on the outside of the house or outlets on the outside of the house that you haven't already detected, you wanna go ahead and check those too. Or any lights in closets, you can check those as well. So that is how I identify things. And then down here in the basement, um, since it's all underneath everything, for example, the second wire on the right, I just write basement lights. The reason for doing all this is I will then, I will then um, have some sort of organization on those wires. I can have all the bedrooms be kind of together, all the lights in the house kind of together. I don't mean on the same circuit, but just kind of the order that I do things in the box. The 240 stuff, the oven, the dryer, all that kind of mess, all those you can usually identify pretty quickly, but the outlets and light switches are either on uh, 15 amp circuits or 20 amp circuits. The hot water tank is a 30 amp circuit. It's the only 30 amp in the box, I think. Um, the oven is, there's a 40 amp one in there. That runs to the oven. Plus you can see the wire. You know what kind of wires go to different types of stuff, but everything else is just 12 gauge or 14 gauge Romex. So that you don't always know what to do, where it goes. It just runs up into the wall. And then from there you're lost. Stuff like the range, well in this case they did write range on the wire. But you can see that it goes under the basement and right up through the floor where the range outlet is. So a lot of things make sense. But other than that you got to use that sniffer. Go around and detect where current is flowing. And then I'm going to label all the wires above the box before I remove that box, install the new one, and then wire everything in. In that last clip, the memory card filled up and it just cut the camera off. Don't worry about what I was saying. Now I need to get all the wires pulled out. I've got a light set up running off the generator. There's no power to the house at all, so I can get in here and I can touch these hots. Um, everything's good to go. Pull the wires off the breakers, off the neutrals, the grounds. Loosen up the wire connectors and pull those out. Get the new box mounted up. That might uh, require relocating the piece of plywood to mount that. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, untangling all the wires first. It's the next day and this morning I called the head inspector of the inspections department and asked to make sure could I bring all of these circuits into the box and then with wire, uh, wire nuts, wire nut on extensions to those wires to connect to my breakers. Again, these wires are not long enough to come in and make it down to where the breakers are located and his answer was yes. I could do it basically in a junction box beside or above the box or make all my connections inside the box. So I'm gonna do it all inside the box. I feel like that is gonna be 
a cleaner look in the end and you can always go back in that panel and make a change if there is some sort of a problem. These are the connectors that you use for your wires to enter your breaker panel. So this just goes into the knockouts. The knockouts are those circles you see in there. They are all around the whole box. From the outside of the box, just take a screwdriver or whatever you got and a hammer and you knock that off and break it off. Then the wire connector with the clamp portion on the outside, the nut portion goes on the inside, you tighten that up. Your Romex wire enters the connector and then you just tighten it down. Very simple and I'm going to do all that from the top of the box. Some may enter from the side but most will come in from the top. Pretty much all wired up, just have to bring the service entrance cable in, the ground wire, I have to do two ground rods, I don't know why, but I have to add another ground rod and I have to have two separate ground uh, grounding wires run to them. The service entrance cable is going to be a larger wire, comes in, drops straight through, and I also have to replace the wire going up to uh, through the roof on the mast. Uh, what else? The There will be two double um, 240 double pole breakers right here which are going to be a 60 amp and a 20 amp for the heat pump that's the emergency heat and the air handler and I believe that's all of the circuits um, ended up slipping the jacket of the Romex seen many people do it never done it myself but uh, I think it's a nice little touch makes it easy once that covers off to know what you're looking at um, also good for a video I think that kind of shows everything real quick Wire nutting everything together went together pretty clean at first. I thought this would look crazy, but it's not that bad. I'm sure the Europeans will have something to say about that. They don't seem to like the American way of uh, wiring things up like this. But don't worry about it. Everybody does something different. Well, that wraps up the interior portion of the service upgrade. In the next video, I'll be focusing on the work that needs to be done outside. You can also check out my other renovation. I did some uh, electrical work service upgrade on that house as well. Be sure to check out the first link in the description below that is to my ebook on how I buy cheap houses. You'll also see an Amazon link that goes right to the home page. And when you shop through that link, I get credit for things you buy. So that's a way to support the channel. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.